Hello, and welcome to another episode of Erlang Bits. Erlang Bits. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about GenServer. So GenServer is a behavior. You can spell it in the UK English or the American English way. Behaviors describe a set of functions that you have to implement in order for these things to work. So in this case, we only need init, handle call, and handle cast. And we're using start link as a wrapper around the GenServer start link function. Our start link, we can go look at the documentation. There's two versions of the GenServer start link. There's a three parameter one and a four parameter one. We're using the four parameter one to register the Gen server with a name. We can use this local module to register the gen server as the module's name. So in this case, the module's name is episode three. And if you haven't seen this syntax before, uh, this is a macro. So it, it will just replace the module name here for you. So you don't have to write episode three. From here, you have to give it a module. So this is our module here. And then we give it our arguments. So these are the arguments that are passed into the init function, which is defined within this module. And then there are some startup options that you could go look at if you would like. I'm not going to use any here. Our init function is very, very simple. We are going to say it worked. Remember that our initialization is just an empty list. So we take in an empty list as argument. And then we're going to say, OK, it worked. And we're going to pass back basically an empty state. If we look at the module init function inside the gen server documentation, you can see that we can return a bunch of stuff. But the most simplest one that we can return is OK with a state. We'll just thread it through all of our calls. But if we had some state inside of our gen server, we could manipulate it within all of our other calls and maintain consistency with that state. There are two functions that we're going to define here, handle calls call and handle cast. These are basically synchronous and asynchronous messages. So if you notice that handle call takes an additional from parameter, that from parameter is a client with a PID and then a tag to reply with. I've not used these tags very much or this from parameter at all. So this is something that we'll probably look into it in the future. But when we get a synchronous message, we will basically just log that we got that message and then we'll reply with an empty tuple. And also we'll just thread the state through. So this is how you would send a message back to someone calling this gen server with a reply. And then the handle cast, you'll see, again, we drop this from because there's no one to reply to. It's an asynchronous message. And then we just do the same thing. We log the message. And then in this case, we send no reply and we thread the state through. This is all you need to do to define a gen server. And to use this thing, uh, we would have to start it up. So if we want to start it up, it will return basically two things for us. Uh, we're not going to use the PID because we registered the name locally. We're just going to call episode three start link. And that will start our gen server so that we can send messages to it. We'll use gen server call with our named gen server episode three. I will just send it the message hello. And you can see here that remember we were talking about loggers last week. This is a kind of default logger here. And it will say got hello because we asked it to do that. And then it will reply with that empty tuple that we told it to. Uh, the alternative here is that we can cast. So you can cast and that sends an asynchronous message uh, just for a bit of change. Let's send world. This will just send our asynchronous message and we'll see got world and then it'll just send okay back so okay just means like it actually sent the message but it will never reply back remember so that's basically it that's the the minimalist gen server that you could have in future videos we're going to talk about way more complicated gen servers there's cool things that you can do for example you can do hot code reload one interesting thing we can do with uh rebri applications is we can start these gen servers on their own we can do that inside the modules base supervisor this project is just called Erlang bits like this. And when we create the rebar project, it will automatically create this underscore soup dot Earl module. And there's some stuff in here that, that we could talk about. But one thing that is important is we can start our gen server here. If we just comment this out and uncomment this, we can basically start these child specifications. And in this case, we're going to say with an ID episode three gen server, and then we'll start the module episode three and the start link function with no arguments. And so from here, basically we can get, we get to skip the start. So we, we no longer need this, this start message here. It will just be started for us. And so we can copy and paste this and it will just say, got hello. The gen server will be started automatically. And so this is kind of like how you build up processes and services in Erlang is you just have these like gen servers or whatever servers and you just send messages back and forth and you start them up at start time. In future episodes, we'll discuss things like how do you start a rest module so you can make rest requests or how do you do web servers or these sorts of things thanks for checking out this week's episode of erlang bits and we'll see you in the next one don't forget to like and subscribe Bye bye